Welcome back to Out of the Rough. I'm with Michael Crane and Ed Bernstein. And Michael, we're talking about your smart business evolution. And I want to talk about your book, uh, Beyond the Billboards. Beyond the Billboards. What gave you the inspiration to write your book? Actually, it came from a client. Uh, here's what happened is I got a, cl a client who called and said, I'm losing market share. And you could tell he was panicked. And he says, can you help me out? And so I said, well, let's find out why. And it actually didn't take me that long. What had happened is he was a retailer, and there was obviously other retailers in the state. And, but he had 23% of the market share, Fred. I mean, that's a big chunk. That's huge. Yeah, huge. But it went from 23 all the way down to 19, and his closest competitor at that time was 13. So he had a big uh, lead against everybody else. But he was losing market share, so he calls me. I'm panicked. What do I do? I said, well, let's find out what happened. Well, long story short, they're retailers, right? And they're a retailer, obviously, of a particular product. But the people who manufacture the product, like say a telephone, right? They know that how that telephone gets sold um, builds either loyalty or disloyalty for that particular brand. It stains it in a way if you don't sell it correctly. You either love it or you maybe don't like it or right. you're shun it. Right, because of the way that it was sold. Mm. So the manufacturer said this, listen, you guys are retailers. You're going to start selling this the right way. And we're going to sell it the same way across the board so it, it builds confidence in the consumer. So what they did is they came across with this mandate, you're going to have certain processes in place and we're going to make sure that you hit certain levels of customer service. Well, when he got the mandate, it was like no big deal because he was already doing that stuff. But when his competitors got the mandate, they looked at it and realized that they needed to change. So while his competitors all got better, he remained the same, right? And so that's why he was starting to lose market share. So then he said, okay, I understand. Now, how do I fix it? Right. So, well, that's a little difficult, right? So what we did is we put together a team of people, and we had mystery shop cameras, button cameras, look like a button. And what we did is we flew airlines, we stayed at hotels, we rented cars, we went to department stores, we called insurance companies. Um, we, we just did everything and recorded that footage and then contrasted it. And what we were trying to find is the difference between great companies and ordinary. And I was expecting a big aha, but I got to tell you, it came down to a handful of basics that if you implement well, that makes all the difference. But the inspiration first came from a client. Yeah, love it. Love it. And you actually recorded what people were doing yep. to build their business. Um, let's talk about uh, the first chapter or the first segment, which is common sense approach. Yep. Well, we got that from Herb Kelleher from Southwest Airlines. We were able to sit down with him. It was a chance encounter in Dallas, Texas. And uh, got to ask him, what makes Southwest so much better than every other airlines? And he says, well, I'll be happy to share with you, but it's so simple, you won't be able to figure it out. And, <laughs> and Fred, it's I got to so tell you, I was confused then. <laughs> right. I love it. And he said, we pay attention to the basics. Now, you know, we understand that we've got to continue to grow and, you know, expand, but we continuously focus on the basics. He says, the problem with most airlines is basics aren't sexy, so they don't talk about it all the time. Mm. He says, we make sure that we talk about the basics of good customer service and good employee interaction all the time. And the uh, the employee is, is one of the most important things to the organization. The, the most important, because they realize this, right? And it, we, I think we've all heard it, but you don't see it very often, is if you care for your employees, they'll care for your customers. Yes, yes. So Michael, tell me about the commitment to contrast in your book. Okay. Well, what we discovered is a lot of uh, people out there uh, think that good work ethic and good intent is enough, and it's not. You have to be able to step outside of your business and not only look at your business from your customer's perspective, but you also have to take a look at your competitors, and often this doesn't take place. I'll give you an example. Um, a parts a conglomerate came together, and they were bringing all these different companies together, and they were going to go out and try to take over the market. And they claimed that they were going to be the best or that they were the best at selling parts. I said, great, well, how do you know? And uh, they all looked at me like that was a dumb question, but then they realized the reality of it. I said, how do you know that you are better than anybody else in this market? Have you looked at the, your competitor's website? Have you tried to place an order with your competitor and then placed an order with your own company and then compared in contrast? And the answer came back, well, no. I said, well, you can't claim that you're better than until you've done the contrast. Right. But here's the great thing. When you start to contrast, when you start taking a look at different businesses, even those beyond your marketplace and you start contrasting to your daily operations, you'll normally find a way to improve. Yeah. Always find a way. Shop your own company. I love that. Yeah. And look at the contrast. Um, dare to compare. Yep. Tell me about dare to compare. That's the compare. That the is the comparison. You have to you have to have courage to do that. Most people yeah. don't even want to compare their mission statement to what they're doing, let alone comparing it to their competitors. They just would rather not know. 
Yeah, yeah. And uh, the last but not, or last two subjects I want to, so simple is difficult. Simplicity is the part that the, her, Kelleher had yep. mentioned, right? Yep. And it's so critical that you just do the basics. It's simple. It is so simple. And, and when it comes to great customer service, here's what we discovered in most retail environments anyways. It is really, it comes down to five basic principles. And make sure that you give a sincere greeting. You know, make sure that you use a marvelous tone of voice. Make sure that you answer that telephone with true care. Always remember to run to the problem. If a customer has a problem, run to it. Don't yes. walk, don't look the other way. Right. And then thank the customer with emotion. These are the handful of basics that often get overlooked. You know, I recently uh, polled uh, some folks and I said, tell me, what is the one thing that you think most companies need? And, they, and predominantly the answer was customer service. Most places just don't have it. And just don't care. You know, here's what I find though. I, you know, I, I do agree with you to a certain extent. But I find that when you start talking to the business owner, they just real, don't realize how far they've fallen off. Right, right. Or, or they, they haven't been able to make that connection. No. You know why? Because they're not contrasting. Yeah, absolutely. And those usually in the highest offices not touching the customers are the <laughs> ones making the decision. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you for coming on the show. If the, those watching the show want to get a hold of you, how can they get a hold of you? Easy enough. Michael at smartbusinessevolution.com. Again, Michael at smartbusinessevolution.com. Or give me a call, 520-483-4002. Great. Thank you very much. And Ed Bernstein, 25 scorecard, 25 score. Dot com. Correct. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Out of the Rough Chamber Edition. I'm Fred Arnold. If you'd like to view this online, go to scvtv.com or fredarnold.com. If you have any questions, go ahead and email me, fred at fredarnold.com. Until next time, make it a healthy and prosperous day, and I hope this show helps get you and your business out of the rough. Great job. Great. It worked hey, out thank great. You. Ed, Perfect. thank you. Hey, we're rolling. Thank you.